Welcome to the concept of engagement. Thank you all for joining us, whether it be morning or afternoon. Uh, looks like we have people from all over the world joining us today, so thank you. Uh, but today we're going to be discussing how Hi Zyvid Pro helps you present better uh, through the concepts of engagement. Now today, um, first things first though, we, we talk a little bit about platform instructions. And these we do with every presentation that we do, and we ask all of our clients to do so as well. Um, to bring you into a little more of a presentation mode, we ask that if you're watching on a laptop or a computer to simply press the F11 key. And what that'll do is it'll bring my presentation up to full screen. And it serves to do two things. First off, it makes it a little more TV-like. Uh, and secondly, it makes it a little more difficult for you to jump over and do emails. But I know you're not going to do that during my presentation. So um, the Action Center down in the bottom right-hand corner has the area where if you click that now, uh, a little area will open elegantly to show uh, Q&A as well as technical support. We have people on staff that can help uh, and we'll be monitoring all of the questions that come through. And then last but not least on the right there, if we have some downloadable documents, you can download those uh, in that arena. In the upper left hand corner, you'll see a small X and that should allow you to close that window back up again and you'll be back in the presentation. If at any time during the program I seem to freeze or anything goes wrong or what have you, simply press the F5 key. That'll refresh your screen. It'll bring you right back to where we're at, and you'll be moving quite right along. So you are now professional Zyvid Pro users, so welcome aboard. Let's get our presentation started today. Uh, first things first, the, the agenda. Uh, we have who we are, technology, present better, and engagement tools. Well, last night I was doing a lot of this uh, and I decided to basically scrap the whole thing. And what we're gonna do today is try out some new engagement tools. Um, we do a tremendous amount of regular programs here at Zyvid. Uh, we have the regular meetings where people do it to thousands and thousands of people. What, what I thought would be really cool today is to really investigate some new engagement tools that we've developed and to talk a little bit about the concept of engagement and why we believe that it's so important for retention and, and to really present better, which is our mantra. So let's get into it, right? First things first, and you're gonna be participative here, let's take a poll. We've got all the different polls available to us here at Zyvid Pro, the A, B, C, D, single choice, multiple choice. One of the cool ones that we have that's a little unique is called our drag and drop. And this is the one that I'm gonna to open to you. So let's open that now. And basically the question is, is what would you like to see today? And what this is, is it's a ranking poll. So you simply drag and drop your answers and bring the one to the top that you most want to see today and then order them as in terms of what you least want to see. So top is most, bottom is least. And what we'll do is uh, allow you to come back. We'll show some of the results of that. You simply click submit after you've created your perfect order. Uh, and those answers will be recorded and we'll show them in just a moment. I'll give you a couple of seconds just to answer that poll. Awesome. It looks like some of the answers are coming in already. Sounds good. So you already followed some of our instructions. Man, we've created some Zybid Pro experts. All right, great. Let's close that poll. And let's talk just a little bit about what's going on. Uh, I've got this. Okay. So we have, um, just to give you a little background about who we are, uh, we've joined forces with a company called VCube, and they are located in Japan, in Tokyo, Japan. And they have over 600 employees worldwide. They, they essentially are the... Um, uh, uh, the, the V-Cube of Japan, as I call them. I'm sorry, the, uh, the Zoom of Japan. That's how they created themselves. They're worldwide. They have offices in Singapore, Malaysia, Europe, Asia Pac, and they have two offices here in the United States, of which we are one of them. Uh, they're a publicly held corporation, and uh, they've been in business about 20 years. So they've, they've got a lot of experience in doing presentations uh, and really working with customers in visually uh, uh, engaging environments. We, on the other hand, are located in Philadelphia, PA, just outside of Philly. Uh, we have over 50 employees, and um, we, we really have a, a background in the event industry, and I think that's gonna show today 
a lot of the things that we've done with regards to Zyvid Pro have to do with production and engagement and, and really keeping the audience engaged because you know, the, the message here today I hope you, you, you receive is not just the engagement tools, it's the retention of the message and why these engagement tools are in place, right? Um, we are the origin, originators of the engagement tools in the engagement score, uh, and we basically do a lot of full service large web broadcasts, and we'll talk a little bit about that today. But first, let's go back to our poll. Now, this can get a little confusing, uh, but essentially the way you read this is, the green ranking is the number one ranking. So you can see how many people uh, uh, voted number one for something really cool. Very good. So that looks like the most intriguing part of it. Second was gamification. Uh, what else do we have? Third, fourth, audience participation. We've got a lot of different, different items here to conquer. I promise we will get to all five of these uh, and we will touch upon them. So let's close that back up and move on with our presentation. So what I thought I would do is take you on a journey. Now again, I wanna, I wanna emphasize here that the things I'm gonna show you today are really just examples. They're examples of what you can do inside an online broadcast. And these examples, I want you to try and use your creative mind to kind of picture how maybe you would use these in your presentations. I'm gonna be a little bit outside the box here, so some of this stuff you'd be like, eh, maybe not, or some of it you'd be like, oh my goodness, this is something exactly what I was looking for uh, and something that I think could really engage the audience. So the first thing I'm gonna take you on is a journey. So let's open up the window for Google Maps. And I'm gonna take over your whole screen right now. And what you're looking at is an actual version of Google Maps. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and zoom in, if I can, into our location here just outside Philadelphia. And if you notice, I'm controlling the experience. This is an actual version of Google Maps, and I'm moving it around the screen for you, and you can see me zoom in. Well, that's kind of neat, uh, and it allows me to educate people and show them things. And again, this is an example of us bringing external content into our platform and sharing it with the audience. But you too can have that experience. You have the ability to interact, and that is what's really engaging about this. But let's take it a step further. How about if we go to Stonehenge? And now what you're looking at is a picture of Stonehenge. And again, you have the ability to move around and view different places in Stonehenge. You can override where I'm taking you and you can move things on your own, or you can sit back and just watch the presentation. Again, an example of how we've taken external content, brought it into our platform, and made an, an engaging experience for people. If you don't like Stonehenge, how about let's go to Rome? And by the way, I was just in Italy literally two days ago. Io parlo italiano un po', which means I only speak a little bit of Italian, but I got my way through it. We visited the uh, Colosseum here in Rome, a really cool experience. And what you're looking at here are some of the areas where they would store the animals underneath the floor of the Colosseum, but they would remove that floor and do something really special, which I thought was interesting they would actually have naval battles. They would flood this whole area with water and they would put ships in the middle of the arena and they would battle. Uh, absolutely amazing, the aqueduct system, all of that stuff. I just found it fascinating, but what a cool experience it was. And it's really neat that I can take you there and we can examine this together. Last but not least though, let me take you to one of the most beautiful areas in all the United States. In my opinion, this is an awesome area. This is the Grand Canyon and you can see some of the places where we're at here. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can look over the beautiful mountains. Uh, just a really cool experience that I can share with the audience. You can do this yourself as well, right? So let's close this up. But what I really showed you here was an example of some things that do create retention, right? It was a cool experience, and there's a, there's a lot of reasons why this stuff works, right? And, and the first is, is that it's a new experience. You probably have not seen this before inside some type of web broadcast. The second thing is, is it actually looks good, right? It, it, it looks engaging. Um, and then the third thing is you have control over it. I control it as well as you. So that type of engagement is something we'll talk about a little bit further, but it does create retention. 
And then last but not least, I think having a decent presenter does help with this concept of engagement and retention. I look at myself as an okay presenter, uh, but again, as I get better and as I learn a little bit more and my style becomes better, that engagement with the audience increases and that increases retention. So there's, there's this engagement of ten, you know, the tending to draw a favorable attention or interest, making things attractive, right? Then there's a visual science behind it. There is actual cognitive studies that have been created on this, and we're, we'll talk a little bit about that, but the visual aspect of making something look really good is appealing, and it adds to that concept of retention. And last but not least, again, retention. The whole reason we're doing this. This is the why, right? Um, all of this stuff does work this way. So let's uh, move on, and we are doing well. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the timeline of engagement. Um, this is kind of an interesting fact where I kind of look at things and say, okay, um, what has happened in terms of the timeline and what's going on with the engagement of, of time, right? What happened with engagement? We, you know, we started with books, right? We started with uh, the concept of books. And the cool thing about books is you watch, uh, or I'm sorry, you read and you create that visual idea in your mind. Right? That was the beginning of the first thing in terms of engagement. Then came what we called the theater of the mind, which was radio. And radio, you would sit back and listen. You didn't have to use your eyes. You could close your eyes. And you could picture the clippity-clop of, of the Lone Ranger or whatever story was being told. But again, that's the way that you were engaged. As we come along now, we've got movies and television. And this is really where the whole visual and auditory concept created engagement using colors. And I put one up there, one of my favorite movies is The, the uh, Wizard of Oz. Um, just an awesome example of a change in color, a change in experience, you know, beautiful music, auditory, all of that stuff made that movie so engaged, and a great story, right? It was a great presenter. So all of those things work together to create an engaging experience. Last but not least, in this day and age, we now have video games. And the reason video games are actually outselling movies is because you have the power to control your own experience. Now, I'm talking a lot about this stuff just kind of in the behinds of it, just to, to give you an idea of the, the, the basis through which we looked at a lot of the ways Zybin Pro works. But here's an example of a, a game called Guitar Hero, and I picked this for a reason. Um, games allow you, as I said, to engage. Well, Guitar Hero, this version of Guitar Hero was put out by Aerosmith, a, a rock band, one of my favorite rock bands, actually. <laughs> and they made more money on this video game than any other album that they've ever created. And they have 15 platinum albums. So if you take a look at that, you know, not only does the concept of engagement, you know, what I'm telling you part of it, it, it it's, it's proven in the industry, right? They're, they're, this is the future of where things are going. So where, do, where does the next step go? Where is the next level of this? Well, I have a little video to show you that will give you an example of that, and we'll talk a smidgen about it. So let me play that video for you now. Hey, and welcome to Connect. Today, we're going to talk about the metaverse, starting with the most important experience of all, connecting with people. Imagine you put on your glasses or headset and you're instantly in your home space. It has parts of your physical home recreated virtually. It has things that are only possible virtually. And it has an incredibly inspiring view of whatever you find most beautiful. Hey, are you coming? Yeah, just got to find something to wear. Oh, boy. oh, hey, Mark. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Mark. Hi. Hi, Mark. What's up, Mark? Whoa, we're floating in space? Uh -huh. Who made this place? It's <laughs> awesome. Right? It's from a crazy... You got to see the kind of concept that the metaverse is creating. This is a reality. This is not just what's going to happen. This isn't a science fiction movie that we've seen before. This is truly, I think, the next step in terms of engagement. They, they now have gloves that, that get hot and cold. They've got goggles that simulate where you are in the universe. They've even got air, uh, uh, treadmills that you can walk on that will simulate moving through a, a, a metaverse. And this is something I think that will be the next step in the next iteration of engagement. But until then, 
we have Zyvid Pro, right? Um, but the point I'm trying to make really here though is, is that the visual 3D stuff engages, engages us to control the experience and that's what makes it immersive, right? That's what makes it so engaging and so memorable, right? And that's really what we're going for. So if you remember anything today, just remember that a lot of this stuff is just examples of, of ways of engaging people to help them remember your presentation, because that is what this is all about. It's not about the engagement tools, it's not about the speaker, it's about the content that you're trying to present to someone and getting them to remember it. Well, so there's another way that you can actually present. So right here, I'm talking a little bit about PowerPoints, and there's a way that we can present in this, in this uh, uh, um, infinite canvas, if you will, and this is a, an alternative to PowerPoint. We all use PowerPoint, we've all seen PowerPoint before, but this is another example called an infinite canvas where we can actually create an area where the, the system, let me just click on it here, there we go. The system shows all of the slides that are available. And again, you as a participant could go to the slide that you wanted to see, or I as a, a presenter could show this, right? What the examples of these are is that a lot of the companies are starting to use this type of technology. So there's a company out there called um, 3D for Science, right? And their, their whole modus operandi is to create 3D objects for science and creating hearts, creating molecules, that kind of thing, but to create an immersive experience that allows doctors to get inside and see things and control their environment. Um, really a cool way to do things, but they get it, right? There's other companies out there like, um, let's see, let's close this and go back into it. So you get the idea of how the, that immersive experience works with something like this infinite canvas. But let's talk a little bit about, um, there we go, Z uh, Zillow. So Zillow is another company that actually has created this whole concept of 3D and they've brought it to the, to the forefront. So 70% of Zillow houses that were listed included 3D walkthroughs, right? And that immersive experience. And what they found is, is that 37% more people bought houses that had 3D walkthroughs than those that didn't. So there's an example of a company that is using this immersive experience, this online experience to, to benefit them. And I actually used you know, Airbnb, this one's the VRBO, but I used Airbnb when I was over in Italy and I took a walkthrough of a uh, apartment in Florence that you know, they boasted they were right outside the Duomo and it was awesome. Well, I got a 3D view and sure enough, they were right outside the Duomo. Uh, really cool way to take a look at things and, and become immersive, right? Again, another example of it. Um, here's an example of Microsoft linking up with an educational 3D immersive experience company as well. So these large companies are starting to see this. You know, I, I showed uh, uh, Zuck, Zuckerberg back then, you know, that's, that's Facebook. Their, their new name of their company is, is what's going on. So they, they've got a lot invested in this type of stuff and these large companies are just proving that this immersive experience is real. Okay, you get the idea, I'm banging it home. Um, let's talk a little bit about gamification. So we're gonna play a game right now, but I'm gonna explain the, the rules of this game. I'm gonna bring up a quiz, it's gonna have a question, there will be multiple answers there, and the person that gets the answer correct and in the shortest amount of time. So in other words, the, the quiz will be delivered to you, you'll see it, I'll read the question, You'll answer it by clicking in the box and then clicking submit. And by doing it, doing it the fastest, you will get the most points. So let's open the quiz right now. So the quiz is, the Colosseum is known for gladiator battles and chariot races. But what other event did it once host? The question is, is were you listening to me or not, right? <laughs> so while that comes up, I'm going to take a quick sip of water and we will watch people come in. Wow, got some people coming in quick. Awesome. Let's give it a couple more seconds here. Total of 30 seconds for everybody. Great, almost done. So let's close the quiz. And you know what, let's do this. Let's display the results and I'll talk to these a little bit. So. What we've done here is we've got two columns, and the first column on the left-hand side 
is the current question that we are on. Um, the second column is the quiz standing. So if we had multiple quizzes throughout the program, you could knock people out of the lead, right? Right now, Kim, it looks like, is in the lead with 771 points. Done a great job. Congratulations, Kim. Um, there is no prize at the end. Well, maybe there is. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, you see exactly what the deal is with regards to multiple questions and competing to knock people out of the lead. This is a really great way to engage an audience. And you can do this individually or you can do this with teams. So if you had a north, south, east, and west, you could basically have those teams compete against one another and knock people out of the lead by answering questions that have to do with your content or what have you. But you get it. Another example of engaging people and really getting them to, to, to work through it. Now, a lot of this stuff is, you know, it looks complicated, but I, I'm, I'm telling you all of this I'm operating on my own. Uh, this is a very simplistic interface. It may look complicated, but it is so easy to operate and create these types of engaging tools and use them during your program. Um, but let's move on. So why are games so engaging? One of the cool reasons is, is because it allows people to compete. We put gamification inside of Zyvid Pro because I was at a live meeting one time and um, I walked in and everybody was on their laptop. I mean, there was probably about 500, 600 people in the audience and everybody was at their laptop. They were looking at their laptop or looking at their phone and the presenters actually doing a really good job. They were, they were up there, they were moving around, they were very engaged with the audience. Um, but as soon as the presenter said, hey, let's play a game, I, I tell you, every single person put their phone down closed their laptop. It was almost like we were back in school and the teacher said, you know, if you get this answer right, everybody gets 100 on the next test. And I thought, boy, that would be a great way to grab the attention of an audience and really allow that audience to engage and get some information back. So competition, I don't know what it is, but it's an innate feature inside our brains that makes us want to compete, right? Recognition, huge. When I mentioned Kim's name, I guarantee you Kim's ears perked up because she was the one that won the quiz, right? Uh, recognition is huge. People have their 15 minutes of fame that all of us will, will obtain in a lifetime. Um, and the bottom line is, is that this really does create that sense of, of, you know, uh, of, of happiness when you, when you win, right? Uh, so I hope you felt that, Kim. Uh, participation. Again, until now, the ability to actively engage in a presentation was impossible, right? You're just sitting back and listening. Now you're participating. You're actually creating your own way through the program. And last but not least, it's fun, right? There's usually a tongue-in-cheek answer. There's some fun stuff, and people kind of get a smile at the end uh, after the, uh, the answers have come up. So you get the idea. Let's talk just a little bit about Zyvid, right? So you get an idea of the examples we've created and kind of shown you today in our engaging part, but what it is that we really do and what we feel about our company that's different from all other presentation vehicles that are out there is that we are a once in a generation disruptor. Um, we've created uh, um, and studied the art and science behind presentations and what helps you present better. There's a tremendous amount of cognitive information and statistics that are out there that do say the attractiveness of something does help people engage. We've read these studies and before we even programmed Zyvid Pro, we took a lot of this stuff to heart. It took us a good six to nine months before we wrote code one to figure out exactly how we could create an engaging interface. And the, 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 the lead technologist, Tim Patch, says it really well. He says, we challenge the status quo in everything that we do. We look at the, the, the psychological aspects of presenting and we develop very simple tools to help people present better. So again, it's a really, it, it, it is what, what we do here at Zyvid Pro. Our, our interest is not creating a web broadcast system. In fact, if we created cars, we would create the most engaging cars, right? Uh, it's about creating that engagement that makes people remember. Um, so talking about it though, our engagement tools, you've already seen biography, um, social media, you can bring in Twitter, you can bring in LinkedIn, a whole bunch of different things. Um, we have the ability to show a word cloud. So if you've never seen a word cloud, let's bring up one. I'm not going to run one now, but give you an idea of what that is. A word cloud is essentially a quiz that asks people for one word. And honestly, a lot of our clients use this at the beginning as an icebreaker. But here's a, a question that was asked. What is your impression of the Zyvid Pro platform? It's elegant, imaginative, and creative. Those were the top answers. So multiple people 
wrote those words, and those words then became big on the, on the work. You've probably seen them before, but these are cool. You can show these, they're a little bit different, they're a little, you know, a little bit something, something uh, different. You can even hand these out after the fact and give, uh, give them as a graphic. In fact, Kim, that'll be your prize. I'll send you this graphic to you uh, for winning our quiz game. I appreciate it. Uh, gaming, you already saw the ticker. Uh, you can open one of those and have it go across the bottom and give a message to your audience during the program. In fact, we've got one running right now. Um, and Pulse, down in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see that little heart. That allows you to give me feedback directly to my presentation. And it'll mark in time when you liked something, disliked something, uh, or what have you. You can edit those buttons to be whatever you want them to be. But again, I can go back and, and kind of adjust my presentation based on the feedback from the audience. You saw polling, and then content panel is probably one of the most powerful areas of our product. It allows you to bring content in from the outside, right? And that is really what makes the power of our presentation special, is that you can bring content in from the outside to help engage your clients. I mean, we showed some kind of goofy examples today where we went to the Coliseum and you saw Stonehenge and, you know, we did some things today that were a little bit different, but you know, we've talked to some of our clients and they have come to us with ideas for creativity that really have been awesome. Uh, things that we didn't even think about. So hopefully you got some of that today through the examples that I showed you and, and uh, hopefully we can, we can uh, help you along that as well. Let's show one, uh, I got two things left here. Let's see, the hybrid meeting. So this is, this is a hot topic and I thought it'd be interesting because this is really um, a part of engagement I think that's been a, a little bit overlooked given the whole COVID pandemic. Um, people are going back to live meetings as usual, right? You're going to see more interactivity. I think we're all kind of longing to get back together again. Um, but those live meetings, there are still going to be some individuals that don't want to attend those live meetings for whatever reason, for whatever health reason or what have you. Um, and the ability to mix both the live and the virtual is difficult. Um, it's tough to keep that virtual audience engaged and keep that live audience part of the, the complete virtual audience. But what we did is, is we created Zyvid Pro Connect. And what it does is it allows your live audience members to participate in all of the engagement tools. So in other words, if there was a poll, if there was a quiz, if there was a word cloud, the audience members could use their mobile devices and basically type in the answers. And those would be mixed in with the virtual audience's responses as well. So you would have one complete audience and one complete report of all the engagement activities of your audience, whether they be live or they're virtual. A really, really cool way to engage. That's, I thought I'd just give a, a quick shout out to that. So right now, um, we can talk a little bit about Q&A. Um, I've got a couple of different questions here, so I can address some of them, but um, if you have any questions, you can go down in the bottom right-hand corner and you can click on um, uh, the uh, Action Center. And if you remember from the beginning, that Action Center pops up, you simply click the Q&A and it says, how long does it take to plan a show? So it looks like Savannah has asked us this question. That's a great question. Um, so this particular show, I created the slide deck. Not gonna believe, so I gotta tell the truth. I created the slide deck on the way over from, on the plane. It's a nine and a half hour ride back from Italy. And I tweaked it and created it. I gave it to the, to the, the people here. We uploaded it into our system. I, I kid you not, five minutes before the presentation started today. But it was very easy. I simply handed them a USB, plugged it in, and boom, the presentation was up. Now, in terms of planning some of the engagement tools, like when you wanna use a quiz, when you wanna use some of these things, our people can help you plan that. Um, we really do have an excellent support team that if you wanna put on a really, really you know, complicated show with gamification and all sorts of engagement tools, we have an excellent staff of customer service people, engineers, and producers that can help you. But if you wanna just do simplistic web broadcasting, very, very easy. You put up your webcam and boom, you're, you're, you're on the road of creating slides and doing them in a great looking manner. Let's see, we've got, uh, oh, uh, so the next question, uh, thank you, Marissa, is uh, do you have lower thirds for speakers? Um, absolutely. We've got a lot of different ways that we can do lower thirds. We've got that cool bio thing that you saw pop out, which even is better, I think, than lower thirds because lower thirds, it's a little difficult to give information. But if you saw at the beginning, I think we had a 
a lower thirds pop out that said Dave Kowalczyk. But the bio, the real cool thing about the bio, uh, Marissa, is that you can use that to um, create maybe uh, links to my resume or create links. Uh, looks like they, they popped up my bio there. Um, or I'm sorry, to the lower thirds. Um, so you can create links to my bio so that they can actually go and maybe watch a video about me or do something different. Uh, so again, the bio tool that's in, you know, included, very easy. All you do is upload a picture of the person, type a little information in, and boom, you've got a, you've got a very professional looking bio that shows for, for your presenter. Uh, let's see, I think, do we have any more questions? We've got some more, wow, we've got a lot of questions. All right, uh, what kind of reporting do you have available from Elizabeth? Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, and, and by the way, let me just mention one thing. So this is a Q&A feature. Again, another engagement tool where we're showing people's pictures, I'm sorry, showing people's questions on the, on the, uh, in the system. So when I, I read the question from Elizabeth or from uh, uh, some of the individuals, you see your name pop up, and that's a very engaging tool. When you see your name, I guarantee you, Elizabeth, if you were overlooking at your email, and I know you wouldn't do that during my presentation, but if you hear your name, you're definitely coming back to the presentation to find out what's going on, right? So again, remember, it's this psychology of, of presenting better and engaging people. These examples are things that are, that are part of humanity, right? Um, so let me answer your question. Uh, what kind of reporting do you have available? Uh, we've got some really complicated reporting. We've got all the, you know, how long do people stay on and, you know, what was their IP address and their name, address, city, state, zip. We had a very simplistic uh, registration uh, process at the beginning of this where I think we just asked first name, last name, what have you. Um, but you can get as complicated as you want. And we also have what are called our engagement score. And the engagement score with Zyvid Pro shows an, a score for individuals as to how they participated. So whether they participated in the poll, whether they participated in a word cloud, whether they participated in a, a gamification, they would get points for that. One of the unique things about Zybit Pro, though, is if you go away from Zybit Pro, we measure the time that you are not online with us. In other words, um, let me be a little more specific. So if you're watching the program and you decide to go over and look at your email, but you still have my voice in the background, we know that you left our program because it's not in focus and we measure the time that you were away, and that reflects negatively on your engagement score. So we really know when people leave, when people come back, and it's a really good way to, to uh, analyze how well you're presenting. Again, all of this is, an, and I don't know where you went or any of, none of that stuff, we just know that you weren't watching at that particular time, but it's in an effort to help you present better the next time. Let's see, I'm gonna take one more question here because I'm running into time, but um, what do you see looking forward into the near future with regards to live in-person events and virtual, wow. Okay, so I'm the CEO uh, and I don't have an answer to this one. <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I, you know, so, so we've created that, that thing I showed you, the, um, the Zyvid Pro Connect and um, as a tool, it's great. So I think what I'm, what I'm seeing is a hybrid type of thing, a hybrid model. Now there are some companies that have said, no way are we doing hybrid we're only gonna do virtual or we're only gonna do live. Now, I haven't really seen that with regards to the larger corporations. The larger corporations either say, we're all virtual or we are all live, or you know, we're gonna do some virtual or some live, but we're not gonna mix them together in the engagement. Some of the smaller companies and some of the mid-sized companies, they are a little bit more open to this uh, concept of a hybrid meeting where we can have a little bit of virtual, a little bit of live, and try to get that going. And it, there's some fear there, though. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. So we, we've talked to some of the meeting planners, and they're like, look, you know, I don't want a, my, my live meeting to compete with the virtual. right? I don't want the virtual to steal away the people that would have come to the live meeting. And I actually did another presentation a couple, uh, couple months ago that, that talked a little bit about that. And the statistics kind of go against that. Statistically, you get a much larger audience when you open up a virtual component to your program. right? So if you do a live program and you say, hey, we're going to do virtual, um, you get a much larger audience because, this is a pretty interesting answer, because you now have the ability to replay that content, right? A live meeting only happens once. You get the people that come and the people that come. If you have a, a recording of that live meeting, you can play it over again. You can even do what's called a sim live. You can simulate the live meeting again and then hand it out to all the people that couldn't make it. So your content now gets reusable and it can actually add to the number of people uh, that you address your message to. So, 
I hope that answered your question. But boy, if I knew, uh, trust me, wouldn't be here. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you all for doing that. So we have one last thing here that I want to show. Um, and this is an example of just how powerful bringing external content into the Zyvid Pro platform is. So what I've done here is I've taken over your screen and I'm showing you the inside of the International Space Station. And the way this works is essentially you are looking at the space station and have the ability to navigate yourself. You can click on the different buttons down at the bottom. If you click on the arrow, I'll take you to a, a separate section of, the, of the, uh, the ship. I can take you to another section of the ship. Or you can scroll out and take a look at the overall view of where the International Space Station is. And that just happens to be over our beautiful blue marble, the planet Earth. Right? So you get a really cool view. The reason that I give you this example, and again, this is just a simple example, is that you can bring this type of content inside the Zyvid Pro platform, and it's another way of presenting, right? We've got PowerPoint decks, we've got virtual canvas, we've got uh, interactive 3D models that allow you to interact with the clients and allow you to interact with your participants. Uh, a really, really neat way to do it. So let me close this and I will show you one last 3D here that's kind of neat. And this is our beautiful Milky Way solar system. And all you have to do is click on the different numbers and then we'll show you the sun, the moon, all of the different planets. You can go to Venus. Again, you can go to our beautiful blue marble. You can go to Mars. Actually, Jupiter right now is in really great form. You can see it in the, in the, uh, in the sky as well. But this is a way for you as a participant to interact. Really cool way of taking outside and external content and bringing it forward. So with that, let's close this. And I'm ending my presentation on engagement. I really appreciate all of the time all of you have taken to be with me today and to learn a little bit about some of the engagement tools out there. But if I leave you with this, it's not about the tools. It's not about the computer. It's not even about me as the speaker. It's about the content that you create and figuring out the best way to get that message across and help you present better.